Hey, it's Nathan from Pack Hacker here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Osprey Transporter 40, a carry-on compliant travel duffel that can also be worn as a backpack and a messenger bag. Here at Pack Hacker, we do travel gear and backpack reviews like this all the time, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. We've been testing this pack for the last four months, and it's seen use on planes and trains in Portugal and road trips around the UK. So, is the Transporter a brilliant all-round travel pack like Osprey claim on their website? Let's get into this review and find out. The Osprey Transporter's aesthetic is tough to put into any one category. It's certainly not rocking an urban style, nor does it fit into the kind of travel backpack or hiking mold either. And since beauty is in the eye of the beholder, we decided to poll our Instagram audience and get their take on it. And out of 362 people, 58% gave it the thumbs up. So while it's not universally loved, the majority of people think it looks pretty good. Typical of most Osprey packs, there is branding all over this thing, and we think it slightly harms the aesthetic. There are big logos on the top and back of the pack, seriously, you can't miss them, and the brand name on both sides and shoulder straps, as well as the product name on the bottom. Now it's time for our favourite part of any Osprey review, and that is the colour names. And the Osprey Transporter 40 is available in Keystone Grey, Kingfisher Blue, Ruffian Red, Sub Lime, and Black. We're not gonna lie, plain old simple black is a bit disappointing, but the likes of Ruffian Red and Sub Lime really make up for it. The blue, red, and lime colors are great for people who want a bold, hey look at me color, while the gray and the black are perfect for people who like to remain a little bit more inconspicuous. We went with the 40 liter transporter, but it's also important to note that Osprey makes a 65, 95, and 130 liter version of this pack. Now, the 40 liter is already quite a big bag to be carrying on your back, and the 130 liter is over three times that size. We'll let that settle in for a moment. Moving into the materials, the Osprey Transporter is made of 800D nylon that's been coated with TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane, for additional weather resistance. The top of the bag, the part that sits against your back, has TPU coating on the outside, whereas the bottom of the bag has the coating on the inside. This has been done because the bottom of the bag is more likely to come into contact with the ground, and TPU can actually be scratched off. And we know this because that's exactly what's happened on the top of our bag. Osprey has tried to be clever here, but it just hasn't worked in practice. And after only four months of use, we're left with a backpack that has permanent marks on the material and decreased weather resistance. Not good. And unfortunately, it doesn't get much better when it comes to how the materials feel. Because TPU is plastic, so the top of the bag feels like plastic. If you're after a luxurious pack, this definitely isn't it. Additionally, we found the material has a tendency to crease, kind of like a shirt would if you stuff it into the bottom of a bag. Walking around with a crease backpack won't give the best impression, and while the material is weather resistant, as long as the TPU doesn't scratch off, we're largely disappointed on the whole. Moving on to the buckles, the Osprey Transporter has a ton of them going on, all from different brands like ITW, Nifco, Wujin, and YKK. We're not quite sure why Osprey has had to use so many different branded buckles all over this thing, but they are all from quality brands and they've worked well in our testing. But in contrast, Osprey has used YKK exclusively for their zippers, and the Japanese manufacturer makes some of the best zips in the game, so this is a great choice. The zipper on the main opening is a big and sturdy number 10, which is also lockable with a padlock. The external pocket at the top and the hideaway harness system compartment feature a still pretty big number 8 zipper, and the internal mesh pocket is a number 5. Finally, there's a lip of material over both the external zippers, so they're safeguarded against any potential downpours. As we mentioned in the beginning of this video, the Osprey Transporter 40 can be carried as a backpack, a duffel, and a messenger bag. 
Now, we're always a little bit skeptical of bags that offer more than one carrying style as opposed to doing one really well. So let's find out how the transporter fared. First, if you're filling this pack to the brim, you should be carrying it on your back. It's simple maths really, as spreading the load over both shoulders is better than one. The backpack straps are well padded and slightly curved, and they provide a pretty comfortable carry overall. There's a detachable sternum strap with a whistle too, just in case you ever need it, hopefully you won't. However, the backpack style carry is far from perfect. There's no back panel, so the bag can have a tendency to kind of slouch down your back a little bit. And don't be putting any pointy or sharp objects inside, unless you like the feeling of being stabbed in your back repeatedly. We didn't think so. There's also no option for a hip belt on this thing, which is a pretty big shame, as this bag can get pretty heavy when you fill it to the brim. And we found that having a hip belt can really take some of that strain off your shoulders. But ending on a positive note, we're really digging the hideaway harness system. Simply unbuckle the bottom of the straps and slide them into the sleeve inside the lid. It's easy, efficient, and takes no time at all. Moving on, the Osprey Transporter transitions from a backpack to a duffel incredibly quickly. Just take the bag off your back and hold the shoulder straps like a duffel. It doesn't get much quicker than that. However, it's important to note that these are backpack straps first and duffel handles second, so a few compromises have been made. First, the bottom of the shoulder straps don't form a proper handle, so they're not the easiest things to actually hold, which is a pretty significant drawback. And the straps are attached to the top and bottom of the bag, as opposed to each side like a traditional duffel, so it doesn't balance the weight as well as you might expect. The duffel style of carry is usable and it will work in a pinch. However, we'd recommend throwing this thing on your back if you plan on walking any longer than a couple of minutes. Finally, Osprey provides an attachable shoulder strap that can turn the transporter into a messenger bag. We like to keep this strap in the hideaway harness sleeve so it's always there if we need it, but you can opt to leave it at home if it's not your thing. To attach the strap, simply clip the carabiners on each end to the attachment points on either side of the bag. It's nice and straightforward. The messenger style strap features a padded sleeve so it's comfortable on your shoulder, and we were surprised at how often we carried the pack like this. It's easier to sling on than a backpack, and as long as the pack isn't too heavy, it's a really great alternative carry option. Other than the three different carry styles we've already mentioned, there are four quick grab handles on each side of this thing. They are padded, comfortable, and come in handy when you're lifting this pack into an overhead locker or hauling it into the trunk of your car. Now, as we all know, it's important to stay hydrated when you're on the road. But unfortunately, Osprey didn't get that memo, as there is no water bottle pocket on this thing whatsoever. We feel like one could have been easily implemented for such a big bag, and it's a real shame it doesn't have one. You could potentially attach a water bottle with a carabiner clip to one of the attachment points located on the outside of the bag, and we ourselves have actually put a water bottle down into the hideaway harness sleeve before, but it didn't work that well, the straps kind of get in the way, and we're just really missing a water bottle pocket on this thing. Before we move inside the main pack, we have to talk about the compression cube that this pack comes with. That's right, this 40 litre bag can fit into this small compression bag. The compression cube isn't the smallest at 11 inches wide, 8.5 inches tall and 4 inches deep, but considering it fits a 40 litre bag inside, it's pretty impressive. The benefits of putting it inside this thing will depend on your use case, but there are a few advantages that we're really digging. For instance, you could put this cube at the bottom of your one bag travel pack if you've got room, and then at your final destination, before you're about to come home, you could empty this thing out, fill it up with loads of gifts for friends and family, and yourself of course, and then check it in on your flight back home, and come back with a load of stuff you wouldn't otherwise have had room for. Or you could compress it into this bag, throw it into the trunk of your car, and then you've got like a big 40 litre bag at your disposal at all times, and that's pretty awesome. Moving back to the transporter itself, there is a large quick grab pocket on the top. This is nothing fancy, but it does the job really well, and it's a great place to store your phone 
wallet and passport for quick access. There's also an ID card holder on the front of this pocket, which is a great addition and could be a lifesaver if you ever lose this bag. Now it's time to undo the buckles at the bottom, unzip that large U-shaped lid and take a look inside the main compartment. The Transporter 40 is essentially a large 40 litre bucket you can throw a load of gear into. It's easy to pack and maximise all the space inside. Additionally, there are two compression straps that will help hold everything together, and while we didn't utilise them too often, they're nice to have. Wrapping up the inside of this pack, there is a zippered mesh pocket at the bottom, which is great for smaller items you don't want getting lost inside that large compartment, we used it to hold our sunglasses and human gear go tubs. Finally, something that's really important to bring up if you travel with a laptop is that the Osprey Transporter 40 doesn't have anywhere you can put it. That's right, there is no laptop compartment in this thing. Now, again, the same with the water bottle pocket. This is a real shame not to have as lots of you will travel with a laptop. If you don't, it's not that much of an issue. But if you do, this likely isn't the bag for you. Now, you can put a laptop inside. There's plenty of room inside this thing, but there's no protection whatsoever and it could be hard to access quickly and it's just not practical whatsoever. And it's a real shame that they don't have this in this pack. We've been testing the Osprey Transporter 40 for the last four months. And in that time, it's seen use in Porto and Lisbon in Portugal, as well as a couple road trips around the UK. We haven't been easy on it either, as it's been thrown in the trunk of a car, placed in overhead storage on a train, crammed into a locker at the gym, and even checked into the hold of an international flight. Overall, the craftsmanship is solid and the components come together well, but the durability of this thing really concerns us. And in just four months, the TPU coating has already started to scratch off, leaving marks around the pack and heavily affecting its weather resistance. The durability of all the other Osprey gear we've tested hasn't really ever been brought into question, and it's all performed pretty well on that front. But for a bag that's claiming to be a brilliant all-round travel pack, it's simply not good enough on the Osprey Transporter 40. In testing, we struggled to use this thing in a one-bag travel capacity, and the lack of a laptop compartment and water bottle pocket proved quite tough to deal with in a real-world environment. Moving into the pros and cons, the hideaway harness system is quick and efficient. There's a good range of colour choices available, and the Transporter 40 can be packed away into a compression cube. Now the cons, there's no laptop compartment or water bottle pocket. There's also no hardback panel or option for a hip belt, and the TPU coating on the exterior scratches off. Osprey claims the Transporter 40 is a brilliant all-round travel pack, but we found it falls short in a few key areas. The lack of a laptop compartment and water bottle pocket is a huge oversight and the durability is a concern with the TPU coating scratching off after only four months of use. This being said, if you're after a 40 litre pack that you can fit a load of gear into and throw into the trunk of your car, or you like the idea of a packable bag you can check in on your flight back home, the Osprey Transporter is worth a look. Thanks for taking a look at our review of the Osprey Transporter 40. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of this pack, what you would use it for, and whether you'd actually pick one up for yourself. And as ever, make sure to head over to packhacker.com forward slash newsletter, sign up for our newsletter and never miss an update. Thanks for checking this one out. We will see you in the next one. Carry on compliant traffled, traffle duffle. What's that? For the more inconspicuous about out there. What? Our review of the Osprey for Os Osprey Transporter 40. <laughs>